Hello everybody, in this video we are going to be learning about PyArtGUI mouse functions. So we will obviously need a python file, you can name it to whatever you want. Yeah, and we will have to import the library obviously. And once you have done all of that, let's get started. So these are the screen functions which you are going to learn. You are going to learn more than this obviously. But this is the first thing. So the first screen function is pi.gi.size. This will return the screen resolution. So let's see. Okay. Now let's execute it. Oh wait. We need to print it because it just returns it and we need to print the data we have got from it and store it in a variable also. So as you see here, its width is 192 pixels and height 1080 pixels. Okay, that's good. I think that's the average. Okay, the next one is the position. The Python, uh, sorry, the PyRTGI dot position. So I'll return the position of the mouse. Okay, so let's test it. Okay, as the same previous one, you'll have to print it out. Let's just print it as we do usually. Do I do it usually? Tell in the comments. Okay, uh, I don't know which point is there when I was moving the mouse right now, but it's just saying X1761 and Y76. Oh, yeah, I don't know where that is. It's probably around here. Well, there's no one like this. Anyways, the next one is the screen. Okay, this one I have to go into a bit more detail. So it returns if the parameter. So if we give like, um, we could give it like any number. Um, let's say like, um, first one we could put like uh, one two nine zero, and next one we could be nine zero 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 zero. This will probably print false because it's not on the screen. And let's just print it. That's a huge number. And run. And false. But now, if I put a different number, like 90, it's true. Remember, this one's the X and this one's the Y. If you want to check out your screen resolution, just use the previous one, which is size. Okay, let's go to the next one. Which is the pt.move2 and move functions. Uh, let's go with the move2 function. So we can move the mouse to any point in the screen. Okay, so let's say 300 in the x-axis and in the y-axis, let's put 100. And if you want to, you can even put a duration of how many seconds it should move. For now, let's just put 2 to watch it move, obviously. And as you see, it's moving. You could create a malware. I mean, it's not a malware. You could just prank your friends with this. Anyways, let's just remove that and retry it. And as soon as that happens, it moves right over here. Okay, next one is the move function. And this does a very similar thing. But instead of moving the mouse to a specific position, it moves as it's written here, like now 300. So it moves 300 pixels on the x-axis. 
and then also 100 pixels on the y-axis so it moves up uh, I just want to test this out so let's just run I'll put the mouse there and okay that is very instant uh, let's just do again now let's try it okay as you see you are watching that move so it moves not exactly as I told but it moves in a slanting way and if you want it only to move on the y axis you can put here none and the same works with the move to function so let's go oh, what have I done uh, okay for some reason for me that none doesn't work and if it works for you please tell in the comments okay anyways the next thing here is the tweening and easing function. So, I am not going to actually explain what this is about. But, if you are interested in it, just go and read the link in the description. It will be this entire part. So, the tweening and easing functions is just for animating the mouse. Like... Start slow and end fast and start and end fast but slow in the middle and rubber band at the end. Uh, I don't know if you want to try that. But if you want to do this, obviously refer the link in the description. Okay, the next one is the drag functions. So it's like obviously the name drag. But if you want to see this, uh, open MS Paint. Yep, everyone's favorite. And we'll import the time because we have to wait before it entirely runs. Others will be dragging on the Visual Studio screen. So import time and write time.sleep or type time.sleep, which will make it wait for three seconds. And remember, it's a default library if you don't know that. Okay, and then you must write this. Pyro GI, the drag too. So it will drag, let's say your mouse is over here. And this would be the X position and this would be the Y position. And you can choose which uh, button, meaning the mouse button, the left or the right. Oh, sorry, yeah. So let's say it is here. So it'll drag until it reaches that point. So before we run it, let me just clear this. Okay, now let's run it. Okay. As you see, it has dragged. Never knew dragging would be so fun. Okay, so that's the drag function. Okay, so you might have seen this one in the demo, which is episode 1 of this series. So, yeah, this function is click. So, it can click anything. Yeah, it's that. So, you could choose which button, which will be equal to the left one. And, yeah, so we'll click on it. So uh, let's just test it out. So we need something for it to click on. So let it click on here. Then the cursor will go there. So let's just put a time dot sleep for one second. That will be good. And let's just put, uh, oh sorry, wrong line. Okay, it should do that. Yes, as you see, it has clicked. Okay. There's another cool thing which you can do, which is this thing. So now I'll just put this as a comment. Okay. Now one interesting thing. So take a screenshot of a button. This is the run button on the Visual Studio code. So we are going to run that or click on that. Or if you need to take a screenshot of your own thing, we'll take a screenshot of it. So yeah, let's take a screen 
chart, okay, select the tool, task and then sketch. Okay, new photo. Okay, let's take um, a photo of this one. Um, I don't know. Let's say this. Okay, I don't know if you saw that one or not, but it is taking a screenshot. So let's just save. And let's just save this as anything you want. It could be like P, oh my God. T, P, and G. Okay, let's save it. Okay. Now, as you see, we have T, P, and G. So we're going to click. PNG. Now it should click on it. Now let's see what happened here. Oh, I forgot to put the file type. Okay, now it's done. Okay, it's since I clicked on this, I don't know. Oh, yeah, oh, sorry, the photo was the run photo. I'm getting confused on what I've done right now. Yeah, okay, as you see, that's clicked on it. Now if you want to click it like two times so that will. Click it two times for some reason. I don't know. You can put like clicks is equal to two and run. See, as you see, it's clicked it two times. Uh, I don't know if you noticed that, but I noticed that because it was on my screen. Okay, and if you want to watch it do that, we'll put an interval. Interval. And you can put it for like one second, let's see. So you can watch it right now. See? Uh, okay, that was in one second. Uh, okay, anyways, you might have seen that. So that's that. And remember, you could put it any, like, any button you want. Let's say you want the, the, um, the let's say, the right mouse button. Okay. So let's run it. And go and click on the right button two times. Okay, that's a pretty noticeable. Okay, the last thing which I'm going to do is the mouse scrolling. So I'm not gonna teach show it like how we do it because then the video will become too long. So I'm just gonna show it right over here on the documentation page. If you want, you can get the link in the description. Anyways, let me explain. So you can do it by uh, PT, which we have put it as our, what do we call that? Our, what do we call it? And then we'll do dot scroll. So we'll do scroll by 10 clicks. By 10 clicks means uh, to test this, you'll need a real mouse, meaning a physical one, not the one that you're connecting into your laptop. So, move just a tiny bit and you'll feel a snap. That snap is one click. So now, here is it in scroll 10 clicks. So that'll be like 10 snaps. So, yeah, that's one parameter. And you can even do minus 10 clicks, which it makes it obviously my simplex which scrolls it down and the last one meaning the last parameter which is make it scroll 10 clicks which is 10 clicks up and uh, but before you do that may go to the x in 100 and y 100 so it will make it x 100 y 100 and then scroll it. And on OS X, which I guess is Mac and Linux platforms, Pyata GI can also perform horizontal scrolling by calling the head scroll function. For example, this, uh, there'll be a horizontal scrolling bar, which is kind of like, you get it, a horizontal scrolling bar. And same way, it works the same way as the default one. And the scroll function is a wrapper of vscroll which performs vertical scrolling. And this is the end of this video. 
and would be one of the last videos of this series. So like, share and subscribe.